I think if we're talking about sculpture, you know, the, the main problem is how to levitate an object. And I'm, I'm almost 100% sure it's impossible, but the chance that it's not, oh, I mean, to me, the chance that it's not exists in just changing what the object is. But, but I mean, the, the major frustration in, in the studio when I'm, let's say, trying to do something is the fact that I can't make something levitate. I mean, that's like so frustrating. And I can't, and I don't even know what else. I mean, if I'm thinking about a freestanding thing, that's kind of the only thing I want to do to it. I guess that I don't really believe in, in accidents or randomness. I mean, I think, it's, I think that it's um, just about being able to, to catch things as they're coming through, um, catch them and just gently turn them over. And I think that there's a certain awareness or a, a desire to be aware of what, of what is there and what's coming through without forcibly asserting anything necessarily in the process. I mean, I think part of that might also be something that I need to convince myself of to be able to work. Because I, I certainly don't, I mean, I, I can't approach it as, okay, I need to make a work of art. How, how can that be done? It's, it's more like I, I have eight years of, or ten years now of materials and I'm not willing to throw anything away because I can't fathom the thought of more junk being buried in the earth and what, you know, I need to build a new shelf to consolidate this stuff. And then in the process of a pathetic attempt to build a shelf and things getting knocked over and falling and reconsolidating and sort of then, you know, it's like putting the whole thing through a sieve again and again to try to extract whatever juice is left from that sort of you know, I would say that decade of, of um, processing and whatever. I just don't necessarily want the objects to be scrutinized and I don't want them to take up space in your visual field. I want them to expand the field and the space of the experience. I want them to um, uh, inhabit and create so, so you know, the more if, there, if there's detail in something, then it has to function in a, in a place and in a way where the way that it absorbs attention is appropriate. And, um, and I, guess, I guess I just want to keep people moving or something. I don't, want it to, I don't want it to sit. I don't want it to have weight. Um, I don't want it to make eye contact with you. But, but I still want it to, to pass along its, its wisdom. I mean, my job is basically to do something in a room. So the, the most logical place to begin is, well, what's, what's that room? And, and um, what's it for? And what does it feel like? So. Yeah, but there is, but there is an interest in architecture. I mean, from from earliest art history classes, it, it was always the, the the different churches and things that seemed so spectacular. I mean, I sort of understood those more than the paintings, maybe in some kind of way. Um, and I I also think that um, just just because of the let's say the what I'm good at and what I'm not so good at, it's, it's just ended up that way. I mean, I'm not good at designing an object. I'm not good at making a series of decisions on a, on a flat surface that's compelling. I'm better at um, understanding the, the, the spaces of a, of a room, um, better at arranging. <laughs>